Hello, I'm Daniel Montgomery from Gold Derby, and I'm here to moderate this Gold Derby Spotlight virtual conversation with uh, for Netflix's critically acclaimed limited series Made. Uh, with me now are showrunner and executive producer Molly Smith Metzler, executive producer and director John Wells, actor Margaret Qualley, who plays Alex, and actor Andy, uh, Andy McDowell, who plays Paula. Uh, now inspired by the New York Times bestselling memoir, Made, Hard Work, Low Pay, and A Mother's Will to Survive, written by Stephanie Land. Made follows the story of Alex, uh, a single mother who turns to house cleaning to barely uh, make ends meet as she escapes an abusive relationship and overcomes homelessness to create a better life for her daughter, Maddie. Uh, seen through the emotional yet humorous lens of a desperate but determined woman, this series is a raw and inspiring exploration of a mother's resilience. Uh, so welcome to all of uh, my panelists here. And, uh, you know, first off, I, I, I thought I'd ask what inspired each of you to, you know, want to tell this story when the opportunity uh, came to you. Uh, let's start with uh, Molly, who, uh, of course, uh, created it. Hi there. Well, uh, what inspired me was when I read the memoir, I'm a mom, and it was the, that thing where I it just ruined my sleep for several nights. You know, it really upset me that this country makes it so difficult for someone like Stephanie Land to care for her daughter and to make ends meet as a single mom, you know, working on minimum wage. So um, what inspired me was rage. You know, I was really angry um, and upset by the book and uh, excited to enrage all of America. So that was mine. <laughs> and how about you, uh, John? Um, I was just very moved by the book. Um, I have a family that, uh, you know, has experienced a number of things that were discussed in the book. And uh, it's something we don't talk about enough in this country. We don't talk about the fact that the safety net is, uh, is incomplete. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, with the, uh, the new legislation that's in Congress, we'll have an opportunity to fix a few of those holes. But uh, this is something that happens to a lot of people and, and uh, people that I know personally in my family who have gone through some of these experiences. So um, I was very moved by it. And uh, Molly and I were working on Shameless together and we had the opportunity to give her the book. She's a wonderful writer and, and uh, playwright and, um, and she responded to it. So off we went. Uh, and Margaret, not only do you play the, uh, the starring role, uh, you also brought your mother, uh, Andy, uh, into the project as well uh, to play your mother in the series. Uh, so, so what inspired you about it? Um, I, you know, I had never read a script like that and I never had the opportunity to play a part like that. Oh, I didn't have it at first, you know, I had to like audition and do all that kind of stuff, but, um, it was just like a huge undertaking and I really wanted to try. And then, uh, as far as, you know, having the opportunity to work with my mom, I knew no one could do that part better. And I was so lucky that um, I got to work with her. Uh, and Andy, you know, well, what were you thinking about this whole story uh, and, and the opportunity to work with Margaret? Uh, it was a beautiful surprise. She's incredibly independent and um, understandably wanted to forge her own career. So, she, you know, she gave me a big gift. Um, <laughs> I um, grew up a, a, around a lot of manic depressive people. Um, it's, it's something that I'm really familiar with and my daughter was aware of that. And it was, a, it was very cathartic for me to, to live in the body of someone who was manic depressive. I have even more empathy than I did before previously because it's draining and it's exhausting to have to be that person. And um, I just, you know, so thankful I got to work on a John Wells production and with Molly and it was a huge gift. Uh, and, you know, the series uh, premiered on uh, October 1st. Uh, so, you know, as we're recording this, people have had a couple of months to, uh, to, to watch this. Uh, what kind of responses are you getting to this? Because it's, it's such a powerful story that I'm sure a lot of people can, uh, can relate to and, and resonate with. You know what I'm hearing a lot of, which is, is so beautiful, is just people, women, especially being excited and grateful that this story is on screen. I think many, many people in 
watched made and didn't really understand emotional abuse and also didn't understand that they maybe were a victim of it. But we've had a, I've gotten just personally a lot of notes from people saying, you know, made open my eyes to something I wasn't aware of. Um, and we don't get to see characters like Alex on screen very much. And, you know, thank you for, for Stephanie for writing the story and thank you for, to Netflix and to all of us for telling it. So it's, uh, it, yeah, it's been really positive in that way. I think that's what I've heard more than anything else is um, I think all of us have received emails and communications from people that we haven't heard from from a long time that have just been thankful that we were talking about these issues and that it sparked conversations and and what we're seeing increasingly now uh, in the press has gone from just reviewing or talking about the show itself to actual conversations about emotional abuse about the the difficulties uh, in the social safety net. And that's been, uh, you know, that's very gratifying. And and beyond the fact that a lot of people showed up to watch it, which I don't think, I mean, Molly and I talk about it all the time. I, it wasn't our expectation. I mean, you know, you sort of hope that that it'll be well received and that people will be interested enough. But the the kind of the overwhelming number of people who watch it has meant that the what Stephanie set out to do in the first place in writing the book has touched, you know, millions and millions more people than uh, than the book originally had. So. That's very gratifying, I think. Yeah, uh, Margaret? Really similar stories to what you just heard, but um, the response has been incredibly surprising for me um, and just really, really touching. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I'm honored to be a part of something that's sparking conversations like this. How about you, Andy? Oh, I've had so many amazing experiences with people um, wherever I go um, that have just been blown away by the, the whole made experience. Um, very much touched by, I get compliments all the time, everybody telling me how blown away they were by my daughter. And um, just how pure and honest she was in her performance and what it meant to them. And, you know, quite often people that have been in situations like this and feel like their story is being told. And, um, and also people that have had relatives who were bipolar um, have thanked me for my performance and how real I made her. So, you know, it's, it's great when you have something that is this successful and people were watching it and you're so thankful to have something successful but the depth I think is even greater because people are touched by something that is really important and people are also giving money I've had friends say that they are donating and giving to charities that support domestic abuse so it's really you know it's, a, it's been a very, very powerful show to be a part of. Um, and, you know, one thing that, that stands out about the show uh, is that this is a very emotional uh, uh, and, and difficult uh, subject matter, but there's also a lot of humor and hopefulness to it. Uh, so, Molly, I was wondering what kind of, you know, and, and John, what kind of balance you, were, you wanted to strike to make sure that this was a very honest and, and, and you know, authentic portrayal, but also uh, felt hopeful and, uh, and, and uplifting at, at times when, when uh, there, there is triumph. That's all Molly's extraordinary writing. So I'm going to let her answer that question. Oh, thank you, John. That's not true. But um, <laughs> I will say, John and I talked very early on about how to make sure made didn't taste like broccoli. You know how it didn't feel like a lecture or like school. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, you're sitting down Saturday night with your popcorn, and you don't want to be, you don't want to be made to feel terrible about something. I think the key for me was to sort of sneak the audience into learning as much as I learned when I read the book. But the, to me, the key is to go on the ride, to really care about Alex and her mom and the characters. And, um, and to me, a big part of that was her sense of humor because it's her coping mechanism, but it's also ours, you know, at home on the couch. Like we have to find lightness and joy in the story or we're gonna turn it off after the pilot. So it was a really wonderful way uh, that the writers and I worked to try to keep that ball in there, to keep the light and the humor and her point of view so instrumental to how we told the story. 
Uh, and, and another thing that I find uh, so interesting about what this story uh, uh, approaches and explores is how, is this intersection of gender and poverty. Uh, you know, you know, throughout the the series, we're watching Alex have to navigate not just this system, but also kind of the the desires and interests and intentions of men. Uh, you know, her abuser Sean, uh, and then there's Nate who. Uh, seems very helpful, but also kind of wants something from her. Um, and, and you know, Margaret, we see that, you know, that sort of navigation in your performance, every time we see her face, her doing this, like, you know, you know, three-dimensional chess, you know, calculus in her head of, of how do I survive this situation. So uh, Molly and Margaret, I'm wondering uh, what, you know, you kind of thought about approaching that uh, and, and, and how Alex has to live in that world. Speaking to what um, Molly and John were talking about earlier, and, and my mom, and, and the the dialogue that um, has been happening as a result of the show, and really interesting people's responses to uh, Nate and um, Sean, in that like everyone has a different opinion about what Alex should have done, like she should have stayed with Nate because he was the good guy or like give him Sean a second chance or, you know, um, reported Sean uh, when she found the Coke in the car rather than like going to help him because she was in the middle of a custody battle. Like there's all this like nuanced conversation of like what you could have done. Obviously the truth lies in the fact that the system has so many holes and flaws and that no matter what she would have done, it would have been enough of a battle. However, um, it's just a testament to Molly's writing in that there's such great nuance and that, that no character is good all the way through or bad all the way through. And, you know, I think that the show kind of champions Nate, uh, in the beginning, but then ultimately he ends up being pretty bad himself, you know, like he's wielding power over a vulnerable woman. And, um, and so that wasn't like the quick fix that that uh Paula Alex's mom was was hoping that for that to, for uh, that to be, but anyway, all that being said, um, it's just it's just it's really really cool for me to see and hear people's various opinions about um about this and really like shines a light in in our own perception of of our, uh, like the way that we're experiencing events versus other people. Uh, and, and so important to uh, this entire series is of course, Maddie uh, uh, played by uh, Riley uh, Neve Widdett, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Um, you know, she's, she's in so many scenes, Margaret, you're working with, with her throughout. Uh, what, was, what was the casting process like with her and, and Margaret and Andy, what was it like working with her uh, as an actor? Well, the casting process throughout was difficult because we were doing it all on Zoom. And that's particularly difficult with a child um, and particularly a young child. So, uh, you know, Riley uh, came in as one of several uh, kids that came in and worked with us, um, began really as a double and just Margaret uh, came to Molly and I and said, I think this is really the kid. And, um, you know, and so we, uh, you know, we said, are you sure? And she said, yes. And then devoted herself in a way that I've actually never really seen before. Just an extraordinary devotion to becoming Riley's uh, make-believe mother. And they referred to her as imaginary mom or whatever. And it, it became very close. You spent a tremendous amount of time with her. And, and I've said it many, many times, Margaret, Riley is wonderful, but she was a you know three and four year old. So Margaret acted for two people in a lot of those scenes, you know, over and over again, she needed to make certain that not only was she doing her performance, but also making certain that Riley was doing what had to happen in that scene. And it was a really incredible thing to watch and beyond all the hours and everything, Margaret, I don't, you, I know you can speak to it and Andy, you can speak to it, but it was uh, really a, a miraculous, uh, miraculously generous thing that I saw you do. Thank you, John. Um, thank you. That means a lot, really. Thank you. <laughs> we did see, we did see how hard it was. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> but it is true that like, I think one thing, um, 
one thing that I think a lot, a lot about in uh, life in general, honestly, is like the concept of permission. And I think with when I was, you know, uh, something I was really conscious of in the process of working with the four-year-old or whoever it was going to be was that like I had to have permission to do anything with her to like hold her any which way and for her to cling on to me and for us to be completely um, connected that way like a mother and daughter would be you know like hold her upside down and grab her here and everything should feel safe and comfortable and cozy and I remember the first time that I held Riley which was actually in a really intense scene where I was fleeing um, Sean's house for the first time and she just grabbed onto me super tight and I was like ah okay like that's what we need like we need that like glue and I was like I can glue myself to this kid and this kid can glue herself to me and um, tried my best to kind of carry that feeling throughout but it was really gracious of Molly and John to be considerate of, of uh, me in that whole process and like you know how uh, not just the what what the kid was doing, but like our relationship was obviously and chemistry was super important. And I love Riley so much. I mean, we spent an incredible amount of time together and I'll, yeah, I'll always have like a weird connection to Riley. <laughs> How about you, Andy? What was that uh, sort of relationship with, with Riley like? Of course, you know, you're, you're playing the grandmother and developing yeah. that different kind of bond with her. Well, I wasn't your classic grandmother, especially in the opening scene. So she was scared of me. I was in a having a manic episode with very pressured speech and um, really larger than life. And I was lying on the floor holding her. It's not a soft, sweet grandmother. Then she's scared. I, she was so scared of me in the very beginning. But um, we worked on that. I ended up spending time with her and Margaret explained to her, this, tried to explain to her the situation and why I was behaving that way. Um, and then I got to know Riley and she was comfortable and understood that it was me acting and that I wasn't really like that. And then we got along just great. But I was amazed watching my daughter in this process because I've worked with kids before and I saw what she was doing and I saw how patient John was being and I thought to myself, oh, this is what they're doing. Because it was, it was a grand effort to get her to, to be an actor, not to just be a prop, because quite often kids are props because you can't really depend on them to act. But they made her an actor and it was, it was a huge undertaking to give her that time and space. And it was time consuming and took a lot of energy. I remember one day, the last thing I'll say, one day, uh, Margaret was exhausted and she tried to pass it off to me. <laughs> she put me in a room with Riley for a little while. I, I was worn out, I'm telling you. I didn't even do it, but maybe an hour tops. I gave her a break for an hour. It was exhausting. And plus she was in every scene doing that on and being in every scene. It was a lot of work and it paid off. It's just extraordinary how much it paid off because it makes it makes the show what it is. Their their love and affection for each other rings true 100% and Riley does give a performance. It's amazing. Uh, and, and Andy and Margaret, uh, you're, you know, of course, mother and daughter in real life, uh, and the characters you're portraying have such, you know, this, you know, such high highs and low lows, the intensity of their relationship. What was that like to kind of, to kind of develop that rapport with each other in these very different kinds of uh, uh, characters uh, with each other as actors? Um, my mom's always saying that it's always in the writing. She's really right there. Like, I mean, these characters obviously don't have the same relationship as uh, me and my mom. <laughs> and um, so Molly made it easy for us in that way and they was, you know, pretty much fell out. But uh, at the same time, it's like the ultimate cheat to have your mom play your mom because you walk in the room and there she is, she's your mom. And like going back to that same com uh, concept of permission, it's like, I don't have to ask for permission to treat her a certain way, hold her a certain way, touch her a certain way. It's all just baked in. And I have 27 years of experience of, uh, of that. And like, it makes certain things be kind of 
automatically uh, there. Like, you know, if she says something silly, I might roll her, my eyes at her and it's just really natural for me to do that, love you, mom. But also if, one of my favorite scenes um, the series is towards the end of the season. Um, Molly wrote this beautiful scene where Paula tells Alex that she's proud of her. And it uh, was just, it was crazy for me to shoot that scene because it felt like my mom was telling me that she was proud of me at the end of the whole show and it just meant the world. Here I go, crying again, just watching her talk. But that's, it was just such a special experience for me. And um, yeah, I, you know, I think there was a certain comfort of not having to worry about me scaring her or whatever, you know, <laughs> really comfortable. And then there was a lot of like fun things that happened. And, you know, when you growled at me and stuff like that, just the natural responses kind of playing with each other. I think that were really built in and super comfortable. Um, yeah, it, you know, it was, I kept saying to her, I'm so afraid this is never going to happen again. I would say that during shooting, during a scene, I would say that to her. So, yeah, it was, it was very deep and complex being able to do, you know, the scene in the parking lot uh, where we're fighting over who's the mother, you know, I'm saying I'm the mother. I mean, just so many of those scenes that, uh, the dinner scene, you know, when I'm saying proud of her i mean i'm definitely paula but i'm also proud of her so and we just done a lot of those scenes where we just let the camera run um you know in the parking lot at walmart it was there was just things happening in that restaurant and in that parking lot at, at walmart where we just you know i remember looking over at you margaret and just sort of we're just going to keep going you know for that reason there was something else that was going on that was so essential that comes through it's so beautiful to the to the series with that wonderful writing and then you just see that happening and you just step back and say just let the camera roll uh and you know with with this series tackling so much uh you know uh, uh and and so much that people are, are experiencing in the real world uh what i'm wondering what each of you hope that audiences uh take away from this story uh you know leave it with uh leave it feeling uh yeah, Molly, uh, how about you? I think it, uh, to me, the most wonderful takeaway is just to have empathy. I remember, you know, watching the first couple of episodes, like the early cuts and realizing just in my own life, how many times I walk through ferry stations and bus stations and don't look down at the people who might be sitting there on the floor. And uh, so I think if the series helps, helps us all do that, look around and think about other people's experience, um, that was, that certainly would make me really happy. How about you, John? Um, you know, as a man, one of the things that's been uh, very gratifying to me is I've had a lot of male friends who said to me, I have to rethink the power dynamics in my relationship and how I use those power dynamics, just how I feel entitled to those power dynamics. Um, and so I think, you know, uh, I've gotten a lot, I've heard from a lot of men uh, that they, have thought back on ways in which they've acted and thought, I don't think I did quite that, but boy, there have been times when I was close to it. And uh, we all need awareness of these dynamics and how we work in these relationships. And um, so uh, that's been very gratifying to me on top of all the other things that we're talking about. I hope that men can watch it and see the ways in which they can uh, abuse the gender relationships and the way and the classical, the assumptions of what these gender relationships should be. How about you, Margaret? Um, I don't know. I mean, there's so many things that you can take from the show and there's not, there's definitely not like one message that I hope, you know, people walk away with. I hope that everybody walks away with all different things. Um, that said, um, I think like, I think that one of the most gratifying parts of, uh, of about playing a, a character for so long, like having the opportunity to, to do 10 episodes rather than a movie or something like that is the way that it changes you over the course of the time. Cause it's, you know, you walk into this situation, one person and, and undoubtedly you're gonna leave very different. Like the, 
first of all, whatever you had to offer the character in the beginning is different than what you have to offer the character at the end of the experience, um, just because life is happening the whole time. Um, but, you know, each episode was revealed to me in real time. I, I think I signed on having the first three. And so I was really like down, down for the ride. And um, while I've never experienced anything like Alex and I'm coming from an immense place of privilege, um, just I think the nature of being a woman lends itself to to assuming a certain level of um, of of like of catering and and uh, like an hyper awareness of other people's um, perception of you and and the ways that you could potentially be affecting them at any moment and and I think that like part of Alex's journey was recognizing that that she's allowed to be feeling whatever she's feeling and um and that the way that she's experiencing the world matters and i think that that's something that uh everyone can be reminded of in certain way Andy? oh wow okay um I think it's a worthwhile journey. I think, you know, because a lot of people start watching it and they were struggling with it. I said, you just got to hang in there. I think it's important to have shows that uh, programming that does teach you and challenge you and also entertain you. And I think that's what you get is the whole package. Um, there's a lot of humor, I think, in my character. She's enormously humor, but hopefully you can see the, behind, the pain behind the humor and the complexity of what that is. But I just, I, I like so many different aspects of the show. I, I very much so agree with John. And I think not only can you look at, can men look at it to see how they are facilitating this sort of male, female, traditional um, way of controlling women and telling them what to do, but women can also look at it and see themselves and go, oh my God, I do that. and and start looking how they give up their power or, or, or lower themselves or facilitate the, a system that has been in place so long that they don't even see it. And I even thought about young girls watching this and being able to see how that works and go, I'm not gonna do that, that's not gonna be me. But at the same time, Throughout the whole journey, I think it is, it's entertainment. And in the end, you feel very, very satisfied. I think that's what I had to tell people that were struggling, just wait to the end because you're gonna feel satisfied. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I hope uh, everyone, uh, you know, watches to the end. Uh, I certainly did. And I appreciated uh, this story very much. Uh, and I, I wanna congratulate every single one of you uh, for, for creating it. Um, and. Uh, Thank you so much for talking to me about it today. It's, it's been a pleasure.